Okay, recording is started. Let's get going. Uh, let's have a quick look at what I did t today. Uh, short of the Dow, the highs, and then hedged. You can see I took it off at, uh, sorry, I took, started shorting at about 52, 54. We actually went up to 57. Took some off at 510. Started hedging. Um, just hedging my so trading against myself basically. <clears throat> so I'm fairly neutral on this one at the moment. And if you look at my three-hour chart, you see I think we have this drop down at the close on Friday and we gapped up so I'm looking for at least a gap fill at 445 and if we if we do get down there I think that, that this could signal the end of the Dow uh, obviously if we hold the reason why I've hedged is because if we hold here then we are going up to potentially the top of this channel at 606 plus plus. Uh, you know, look at my smaller time frames. You can see on this hourly chart, uh, there's a resistance at 556, but here's the trend line resistance high to give me a three-way reversal around right at the 590, 600 mark. It could be I'm too early, and this has got more to run. Um, certainly the daily chart is, if I switch to the daily chart now, daily chart is based on this high in May 2015, May last year. Um, we look as if we need a test of 370. So I'm looking for this to sell up here, potentially come down to 360, 390, uh, potentially get a bounce higher. Um, you can see the stochastic on this daily quite high. And the ultimate the real sort of resistance level stochastic is a good sort of six points higher. Uh, in terms of Elliott wave, we've had, and, and this channel, we've had one, two, this is, we're, sti we're still in wave three. We have not c got a completion of wave three until we get a sell signal and we've not got a sell signal we're flat for the day at the moment you can see we are literally flat on the day if we get a sell signal here then what I would say wave 3 is complete and wave 4 could potentially take us down to 373 and wave 5 could take us around about the 500 mark and then we get the drop if I'm right otherwise if, if, if I'm wrong we will close above Oops, let me do that. We'll close above this level here and keep going on and potentially to 19,000. So that's my thinking. I'm short and high at the moment because of this <coughs> extension on the stochastics and the potential for a divergence on the stochastics. But I'm conscious that this market is bullish and I haven't got confirmation of the completion of wave three yet. Any of you who are big Elliott wave fans will know that um, it's not till you get wave five when the move is over. So we could get one, two, three, four, five. and then uh, the reversal once the five waves are over 
so hence my caution at the moment. Let's put the fibs back. Um, the other aspect of this is that on Friday we had a reversal bar, a star, and all we're doing at the moment is, hence my shorting, all we're doing at the moment is um, playing into that resistance. So it, it's, I, I'm happy to short the highs and hedge if it starts to reverse <coughs> um, on the basis that we may be about to roll over. I'm just protecting my position at the moment while we uh, find support. I've not got confirmation of the sell signal yet. As far as the, this is the fibs on Friday's high and Sunday open low. <clears throat> so you can see how important 538 is. And we are currently failing right on the nose at the moment. Okay, so I'm... I can't, I can't confirm that I'm bearish at the moment because uh, I need to see at least today's close absolute minimum. I need this to close under this level here, literally under under 535. With 535, 536 now, that's where I want to see this close absolute minimum for any reversal signal. Anything higher and it's still got the potential to close up. And we have an hour and 40 minutes of trading yet until we get today's signal, today's close. Because we have, because because this resistance level at 580, 600 is so crucial, uh, I would need this to send me a sell signal now. So we have a, we have a new high on, the, on Thursday we closed un underneath it on Friday, so I just need 500 mark to fail now. That's the main line in the sand. I've got 487 mark there because that's Thursday's close and the market which we closed under on Friday. So that 487 is, is the real sort of line of fire if that is going to short. At the moment the smaller time frames are happy to push higher. So we've got no confirmation of a sell signal until we close underneath that level. Okay, Euro. I called the Euro long today. Why did I call the Euro long? Because Uh, this is a 50% here at 80. We've bumped into a slightly higher mark. So we're closing on the 50% today. We cruised into the daily, or nearly touched the daily 20, and, uh, sorry, 50 and 200. drop back down to support and we are you can see we are just holding this trend line just so if we close above uh, 111 tomorrow that's a big signal that we could come and retest these highs and potentially close higher. I think given this channel I've got written here, I think we're going to come back to 
the Brexit 375. I think there's a decent probability we could hit the Brexit 375. Uh, because we have... that set up. So we're really in, we're at the bottom of the apex with the potential to hit the high of the apex. Before we get the next leg down. So that will put it at 113, uh, but potentially higher, 113.20 area. If we, if we get a sell signal up there, then I would look to short and come out of this channel and start to work our way down to these levels here and ultimately who knows maybe I was asked last December in front of a camera how soon I thought uh, parity would would come but so this was I was asked that question about uh, let me think I was asked that question about here the 20th of December 19th 20th December I said I think perhaps the euro US dollar would surprise you so we then ran up to well we've made a high of 116 uh, and here we are potentially forming holding this, this wedge pattern could be a bear flag so if we the minute we drop 110, I close the low 110, this is finished. This chart pattern is finished, but in the meantime this is holding up. Alright, so I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm day trading it, I'm not swing trading it at the moment, because it's, it's too much in a neutral position. And you can see on this Anybody who's been to scalper school will know that this was potentially bullish. The way we broke above 110.60, ran up into 110.80, and then held late afternoon 110.60 area. And here we are, 110.60.75. So we're pretty neutral. We're shifting around here at the moment with any significant um, decision. But this is why I didn't, this is why I criticised the short on the Euro Yen start today. Because we do have a gap fill situation, but the indicators were very, very low here at 2.30. The Euro Yen got bought. And there we are, closing above 117 into 117.50, actually 117.70. So again, we broke this. We were in a. We came underneath this chart pattern here. Partially closed the gap, but hit major support level from Friday, actually a major support level from Sunday, sorry. The Sunday low was 116.28 and today's low was 116.31 and there we are racing up to 117.71. So I was critical of the short because we were just, the indicators were so low and we had done a partial gap fill, which was holding. Okay, uh, and we are holding at the moment. You can see why I got a key marker at 117.30. So I would look for a short on this daily at a retest of round about 11240. Let me just extend this channel.
So you can see we came out of this channel. Held down there at 111, or just under 111. Uh, and then we are pushing higher to get back in the top of the channel. But So the next, lev next short level is potentially, well, it could go all the way up to 126. But I suspect we're going to have to hit a lot of resistance on a retest of that uh, Brexit drop at 120.80. If I fib it and stop drawing lines everywhere, that might be that might help us more. Yeah, that does help us more. So one two one sixty wouldn't be my target short. Uh, that will be a return to pretty much just under. Also, just above the Brexit drop at 120.80. We are, of course, barely holding. We're actually closing on the 20, uh, so the 50 EMA. So we've got some pretty neutral markets here at the moment. You know, we had the Brexit. You know, a lot of fear in the Brexit move. We dropped down, we formed a, um, a higher low, pushing back into resistance zones, and, and at the moment holding. So I would love to see a push into the Brexit zones, and then ideally break past the Brexit zones, and then get the next leg down. So that's my goal that if I go to the weekly on this let's go to the weekly on this chart you can see a big bar big engulf it's a massive buy signal on my conference in Almaty on Sunday I said to, to the to my audience this is my favorite buy signal on the pound yen weekly chart new low There's the trend line resistance. So we have a new low down here at 130.40, two weeks back. We closed above uh, the whole, we engulfed the whole week's trading the previous week at 138.40. Uh, here we are holding 138.40 and pushing up into that on that channel. Uh, an ideal short for the next short down would be anywhere between 14860 and a full retracement of the pre-Brexit high, the 16020. Okay, so we are smack on the end of this channel at the moment with EU rates this week. So it's, it's not a clear picture that we are, I think we are, you know, here, here, on this smaller time frame you can see we are pushing up from the low of 185.11, currently 185.40. You know, three good weeks on this chart, three lovely weeks. So if we hold that level, 183, 183.80 area, and continue to close higher, and there's every reason to believe we could hit 19,043. And any drop into, if we drop and hold 18 and 370, then we're going higher. Hence my short, the short term short, to see if we can come back, if we can close under 18 and a half, 
um, and then get the drop I want. Anybody got any questions so far? I'm talking a lot and not asking you for a response. Um, I think that that is telling. I love three-way reversals. Let me just make sure it's accurately drawn. Right, I, I think we've broken above the three-way reversal. It's just a question of whether we can keep climbing here or whether we actually fall over at this point. Three-way reversals are beautiful setups to me, and the Dow could be forming a three-way reversal if this week we close under 500. Okay, um, quick look at a few other charts. I uh, called the sell in euro pound last week. That dropped from that's now dropped from a higher eighty six thirty five. We tested eighty two twenty five. I think this is coming lower. Why? Because we are clearly in a down channel. We've poked up to the fib level, and cracked above eighty five seventy, sold. I'm now looking for this to return to the average. I think the average mean in Euro Yen is about 78.30. Uh, we have divergence. Uh, we, have, we have a fib level at the high, 85.50. Uh, we have a sell signal. We've closed underneath, oh, we didn't quite engulf the previous, didn't, didn't quite engulf the last week's trading. We certainly closed underneath last week's open, but we didn't engulf it. So, pound is seeing some strength here. Uh, let's have a quick look at other charts. Euro New Zealand. Um, if this is bullish, it's going to have to close above uh, 157 this week. Otherwise, that's a short at 157.21. Or we could potentially go all the way up to. 15845. Um, let me just look at the data that's coming up. Right, so this is UK data. Tomorrow we have. Uh, sorry, that's. I think that's US data. Start off with UK data. Um, tomorrow we have core inflation looking for a slightly higher figure in inflation uh, inflation is a big tonic for Forex so if that comes in at 1.3 or higher that could be a big boost to the pound um, well then on Wednesday we have jobs, We're looking for a worsening of the job situation. The forecast is increase of the count claim 7.1 thousand from minus 4.4. Um, and we're looking for average earnings to be flat. On Thursday, we're looking for public sector borrowing to be better. 
at retail sales we are looking for a decline I think that's going to be crucial you know after we are we're a service economy if people aren't out there spending I think Thursday's retail sales could be very very telling so we may hold up okay to inflation and job count assuming the job count comes in good and that figure's not right but if retail sales if jobs and retail sales are poor this pound could really get crushed so now there's a little spike higher in the pound yen <coughs> could still be crushed the 50 year and the major pressure for, for the downside on this pound yen is going to be this uh, just a crack above 145 if we get up to 14670 is a 50% retracement of the whole Brexit it's possible we might still make one four six six seventy. Uh, any knock into that zone and drop could present us a great opportunity to get short for a great move. Okay, oil. Any questions? Uh, yeah, there is a question. Sorry, uh, I haven't covered cable yet. Thanks for asking. Let's cover cable. Uh, Wow. Uh, we did not. We closed under last week's open. Uh, I think that the sell signal in cable could come. I would certainly look for a short round at the one. 3535 area. Let me get rid of that. Yeah, my target short. I think we're potentially coming higher. That's 13550 area is the potential next leg down because we're basically so extended to the downside. We're getting a bit of a bounce here. So I'd love to see a breach of last week's highs I think it's essentially a bear flag but I want to get short higher up It's just a question of where this fails, I think. Um, the 135 looks like the most likely scenario for this to rise, produce a three-wave top, and then drop back through 132 into the short zone um, the most logical place it's a tough call because this is a horrendous sell off That's once 3680 is the Brexit close. And that will coincide lovely with the uh, daily 50 EMA. And the daily 50 EMA will be down there at that 13680. So the question is can we get that high? Because at the moment we are failing. At the moment we are getting this kind of pattern. So 
So to cut a long story short, my target short would be somewhere between 135 and 13820. I'm not happy to get short at the moment. Does that make sense to you? I mean, does anybody disagree or disagree with that? Okay. So I'm hoping, I hope I'm making some sense here because at the moment um, the markets are in a sort of a fairly neutral zone, which I think is emphasised by where that euro is. I've been talking about, I, I've talked over the last couple of weeks about how I think the, the euro is neutral, but forming a base, potentially forming a base. You can see how the, the, the range is so narrow in this weekly chart, really, really narrow. Now, the last two weeks have been slightly lower closes, but that's a stopping bar last week. You know, pushed up into 170 area. It came right back, but it didn't it only marginally close below the previous weeks, uh, before that week's opened. So I think the, the buying pressure is is superior, uh, and the bears are just not able to crack that support. I think, and therefore the top of that channel at one one eight is could but could could be seen to be up there. One one two is a massive barrier. So um, it's a good, we would have to close above 112 at least this week, if not next, for that to happen. Um, but uh, at the moment, we are neutral to bullish. Uh, let's look at a couple of others. Uh, Pound Aussie. Let's look at it on the weekly, because if you catch a good move on this, this is, this is a tremendous uh, mover. If you get a tremendous trending chart if you, if you catch a move on this. You can see 174 is crucial here. We're going to move on to stocks in a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, tomorrow at 8, yeah. I'll see you at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, this is a massive level at 17.4. We start closing above this level, and this one could run. Because uh, what do we have? We've had one, two, three, four, five. A, B, C wave correction. I think this is a corrective wave, which could potentially drag this right up this level. Um, and this could be a tremendous chart if we hold this 17 and a half. Because I mean this uh, move here from let's see the low of Around about 17,260, went all the way to 22,400. So whilst there's all this fear in the pound, this is um, it's not got a, a reversal signal because we get we, for that we, for a full-blown reversal signal, we need to close above 17,8.
I think that's a target for this one. Definitely a target. Okay. Um, the Dow is, is just, just struggling on low volume. And all these patterns I talk about, you know, three wave moves, um, you know, uh, what am I going to talk about? It's gone blank, slightly. There's a three wave reversal up there. Um, all these things I talk about in bigger time frames work in smaller time frames as well. <clears throat> so they have a drop. You have a one, two, three, four, five wave drop. Then you have an A. The C wave correction. This could be the D wave that takes it down to these levels. You get these same patterns in smaller time frames. So if you're looking for Obviously, you need to close above 500 for it to be short. But uh, so even if you're a, in, if you're a scalper, watch out for these um, wave patterns, even in smaller time frames. Right. Uh, anything else I like? Let's look at Aussie US. That's held up so far. Now a three wave move down here. The low was 30th of May. We had a sharp drop on the 24th of June, and then we started holding it on the 27th of June, and it broke above that that pattern. So we had a divergence up here from 8th of June to 23rd of June. <coughs> that showed us the drop, but then it only proved to be a pullback because this support level held and now we're holding the upside of this trend line where do I think it's going to go I think we could attack 78.50 all these we haven't had a, a lower close on the weekly Aussie US since the end of May So we've been going up for six weeks. So the dollar is weak, which is good for the markets. All right, and that this weekly channel clearly shows it. I don't think there's anything else I want to look at at the moment on the Friday. Let's look at oil. By all means, stop me. Uh, oil, I think, is pushing up. If we close above 46.23, and we're very close to that now, uh, I think that this could break this resistance at 48.20 and see us attacking 58.63 and who knows, maybe even 67. All we've got to do is close above 46.23. That bodes well for oil companies. Weekly chart, we had a higher close last week off of this uh, 50 EMA on the weekly. So we'll look at oil stocks briefly in a minute. And let's look at the gold.
Uh, gold briefly came out of the top of that channel, closed back under it. Uh, I think gold could be in for a nasty drop. Uh, we are potentially, potentially we've had a three-wave reversal. If we now get uh, we start closing under thirteen ten, I think it's a toast, short term toast. Start holding here, start holding 13.30 and we could be on the way to 14.50. What do you guys see in gold? Anybody see anything in gold? I think this daily chart is telling Been pretty flat the last few days. I think this chart's become a bit untidy. Uh, you can see we got close to that fib level. raced above that channel now we're, now we're struggling we can't close above that channel the fact we can't close above that channel suggests this is a, a fake breakout that was a great place to get short at around about 13.75 and we could be seeing a retest of 1200 sometime soon. If you're not in this, I would look for a retest of 13.35 and then see if we can close and hold it if we close above 13.20. Um, we haven't looked at the FTSE, let's just keep an eye on the FTSE because uh, I've got the FTSE short round about this area. 67.36, we breached it briefly last week. Um, we are potentially making a divergent signal up here in the stochastic. And this 67.36 is a massive area, which we, I think that, that's a reversal signal there, a very high um, tail on that uh, chart, and that's, you can see this trend line coming from the low of 4th of June touch of the 13th of October and 15th of December so we, we, we are really in a very very interesting area which could see this drop quite hard we are a neutral close today that's a doji like close today so any push back into yesterday's high at 67.16 is a potential short a swing trade short Yeah, so any push into that high could see this really crack under that pressure. So anybody shorted the FTSE today, um, you know, that's my kind of trade. Um, right, stocks.
Coal Holdings, massive gap up on that bid. The pricing was on the wall. Um, we, we tested the trend line last week. And so the writing was definitely on the wall for that one. And there we are massively gapping up on that bid. Right, let's look at the stocks landing at the moment. Let's just double check some more. Rolls Royce has done well. Lovely pattern at 607. Ultra Electronics, yep. Flows above 1780 and that's off the, potentially off the races, that one. Right, let's go back to stocks I've got. The ground called PS, uh, Twitter today. Let's have a look at what Twitter's showing us. Yep, Twitter is... <coughs> showing great potential. Yeah, I think Twitter's got at least 2100 in it. I think we could start to see a, a quite acceleration here. So we had one, two, three, four, Five, A, B, C wave correction, the C wave correction could put us up to 2710, at which point I would by 2155 and hope that recovers back to 75. Uh, we are extended up here. So on Twitter, if we were to trade Twitter, I'd want a pullback. Uh, I would buy high on that. Seventeen fifteen. I want to pull back to seventeen fifteen. I wouldn't buy here because I think that is too much resistance. I would buy that seventeen fifteen on Twitter. Twenty sixth of July, right, okay. So that's next week, isn't it? Okay. Well, that's gonna be very interesting then. Uh, is their business model viable? And uh, are they gonna be able to hold on that chart on that eighteen hundred is gonna to have to hold, eighteen is gonna to have to hold on that one. If that's a goer. Right, stocks coming in, TSN, uh, weekly chart, looking for a retest of 18.30, bought this at 13.35, the main support area was 13.10, uh, we had beautiful weekly signal last week on, on Percy on and it's doing okay. If it can really get going, then we should see 1880, uh, 20, 20 pounds. 
if you're not in this, uh, I would look for at least 1560 pullback. Any stocks you guys are in? Um, it's on premiers. You know, if you're interested in um, recovery stocks, I used to track this one a lot. This has been an amazing chart. I think this has still got the potential. They own premium brands like Hovis and um, Branston Pickle, this, this kind of thing. Uh, I think they've got potentially 81 in them. Bear in mind, it is a very low volume stock. Uh, it's got a gap up there at 57. We're going to struggle. Yeah, 46 is a struggle area. If you if you want to dabble with this one, I would hold fire for now and then wait to see if you, if we get 43 again. Because I think if we get 43 again, don't risk too much capital on this because it's a uh, uh, recovery stock, not a, a good uh, trending stock. Wait and see if 40, if you're interested, wait till 43 is seen again uh, and then see if we can fill the gap at 57. But like I said, it's indebted. They did a massive expansion plan some years ago, and it's suffered ever since. So that's my plan on this one. Let's see if we get 43. Let's see if we can jump to 57. Uh, rolls. Uh, the strong power is going to hit this one potentially. Uh, the gap at 6, 7. 670 area. See if we get a return to 670 on rolls. Might not see that. Uh, if the 740 holds, we may start climbing higher and get back somewhere near those highs. Keep an eye on rolls. That's a decent breakout. So that 740 could oh well give you a good projection upwards. Uh, let's have a look at some of the supermarkets, 230. Um, I, I don't rate the Uh I think this could sell. Uh, if we get into 17 and that, that starts selling, I will get short that one and look for that to retrace to... Um, at least 12. Elliot, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, 
these. We've got to at least have a B wave back to that. If we go, we haven't got a cell signal yet. Uh, sorry, I wasn't on weekly. I thought it was on weekly charts there. Um, we've had... that. Okay, could still be some more upside on that. Sixteen fifty is the real line in the wall there. So I think we could still see some upside, but I would later in the summer, if we touch sixteen fifty, uh, I would get short that one. And it looks as if it's going to. It's got some more in it. It's got some more momentum, but uh, I would look to get short that Barclays. Really struggling. Um, the gap fill at one eight seven. Yeah. Watch out for 160. Let's look at RBS. Yeah, I'd like to see that get back to ten. Wow, that's a big that's a big ask, isn't it? Uh, more likely the next leg down is likely to come from eight. If we get any kind of recovery that is. Uh, four five five four five is a uh, gap fill. I'll keep tabs on that one. But this to me says the markets are okay. This to me says the markets are not in great shape. I would want to see a gap fill at, I want to see where we are at about 87 on that one. Okay, so basically um, the banks are looking, so to sum up where we are at the moment, I think the Banks looking very vulnerable. If the banks are vulnerable, then the then the indices are potentially vulnerable. We've seen talked about the indices. Um, potentially topping out up here, and then flat as we speak. Flat to slightly weaker as we speak. So I would 
just gives us a bit more time as we get into July, the back end of July, I would, you know, beginning, or even this week, beginning to look for this market to come off unless it really wants to put a spurt on and close above 18,600. I think it's vulnerable. So I think the, the indices to me are key. I'm looking at that 18,600 mark. Looking to see if the euro can continue higher. If the euro continues higher and the pound continues higher, I. I think the markets, will, the indices will follow. Otherwise, I would start to look for shorts. But these are the markers I'm looking for this week. And as the week unfolds and we get more data behind us, then I will start to um, give you, try and give you some more signals. All right. I hope that helps. Any questions at this stage? Overall, I'm struggling to see this market going higher because of the levels we're seeing, because of the potential strength in the dollar, and literally the, the time of year, the time of year when there is lower volume. So I think the market's going to find it higher to get, going to find it harder to get much higher than this. But I'm open to suggestion if they prove themselves. I'm going to make that much thinner so I can uh, see that clearly. Yeah, but this 18560 is crucial. Alright, thanks very much for joining me and see you in the room tomorrow.